What is copyright? Copyright is a form of intellectual property that protects ideas as they are uniquely expressed by authors. The raw facts and ideas cannot be copyrighted, but what can be copyrighted is the expression of those ideas and facts with any element of the author's creativity. And that kind of creativity can be anything from creating characters in a universe from scratch, to making an analysis or interpretation, to something as basic as organizing data into a table or a diagram. The important thing is that there is some element of the author's own creativity, however small. So a list of ingredients is not copyrightable. However, a recipe with the cook's opinions on the best way to create the food expressed in their own words is copyrightable. Another key factor is that in order for a work to be copyrightable, it has to be fixed in a tangible medium of expression. There's no definition of what constitutes a tangible medium of expression. However, it has been established that writing something down, even on a paper napkin, counts as a tangible medium of expression. Sending something as an email or posting it to a blog counts as fixing it in a tangible medium of expression. Any kind of recording counts as a tangible medium of expression. However, merely thinking something up or expressing it only verbally or in person through performance does not count as fixing it in a tangible medium of expression unless it's recorded. What seems to be the important thing here is that there's some way for the information to be transmitted from the creator to another person without the creator's being there to share it directly. There's got to be some way for the idea to leave a semi-permanent mark on the world. So if you've got your entire novel plotted out and told everyone everything about it, but it's only in your head, that's not copyrightable. But if you wrote it in a notebook and hid it away, that's automatically copyrighted. There's been a misunderstanding that in order for something to be copyrighted, you had to register the copyright. That's not true. A work of original authorship is copyrighted as soon as it's fixed in its tangible medium of expression. This means that anything you find on the internet is copyrighted unless it's in the public domain. By default, copyright belongs to the creator of the work. Copyright law uses the word author, but it's important to remember that it's not just the textual medium that can be copyrighted. Any way that an idea can be fixed in a tangible medium of expression can be copyrighted. For copyright purposes, an author is defined as someone who contributes ideas and expression to the work. If a person contributes ideas but not expression, or they don't contribute ideas to the work, then they can be considered a collaborator or a contributor but not an author, and they don't share in the copyright. Copyright is a kind of intellectual property, and property is transferable. Copyright can be transferred in part in the form of a license, or in whole as in a sale, part of an inheritance, or very commonly as the condition of a publication contract. So the copyright of many published works, including books and articles, often is owned by the publisher and not the author. In a work-for-hire situation, a contractor or employee authors a work on behalf of another individual or organization who employs them, and the employer owns the work. In the SUNY context, faculty who create academic materials and write as part of their scholarly work own the copyright of their work. It is not a work for hire. However, staff who are creating non-academic materials as part of their job description are creating works for hire, which are owned by their institution. Copyright is associated with the tagline, All Rights Reserved. What rights are those that are reserved by copyright? They are 1. The right to make copies. 2. The right to distribute copies, whether for a fee or not. 3. The right to make derivative works, which I will talk about later, and to make and distribute copies of the derivative works. And 4 the right to assign the copyright to someone else, whether as a license or a transfer. So what is a derivative work? First, let's define it in contrast to a copy. A copy is merely a duplication, another instance of the original work. You can copy through traditional media by handwriting it, Xeroxing, tape recording, videotaping, or taking a photograph. You can also copy through digital media, Saving and printing create copies. Whenever you post something to the public web, 
you're creating infinite copies. So a derivative work is more than creating a copy. It's making changes to that copy, or making another work that is based on the original. Types of derivative works are spin-offs, supplemental materials, sequels, translations, adaptations, and conversions to a new format. In the academic context, some common types of derivative works that you might find would be a quiz based off a case study, a translation of a poem, a study guide to a novel, or covering a song with a different time signature or key. All of these derivative works are just as protected by copyright as the original work upon which they're based. There was a prominent court case several years back in which J.K. Rowling, the author of the Harry Potter novels, took some fans to court for trying to publish the Encyclopedia of the Harry Potter universe. The Encyclopedia was entirely their own writing, however, it was a derivative work of her novels. The court found that, as the copyright owner of the Harry Potter novels, she owned not only the copyright to those novels, but also the copyright to any derivative works that might be based on them. 